Hey, Composing Gloves here, and this is another video in the digital to audio digital audio basics. Today we're talking about bit depth. I'm gonna teach it to you in a way that is not really a good way of thinking about it, but the way everyone thinks about it right now and is totally false in a lot of ways. But it is the way it's the way things used to be. All right, so bit depth. What is the deal with that? So we'll come over here, and I've zoomed in way far. Let's zoom out. So bit depth is essentially we have our sample rate and we have to record it at so fast a rate to get our frequency frequencies range, right? So we have to have, we want 100 hertz, we better sample at 200 uh, times a second to get two samples for our 100 hertz so that we can represent 100 hertz. We understand that from previous videos. Now, what about uh, stuff that, what about our bit depth? What about our levels of amplitude? How are we going to encode that? Well, you've been, you've probably thought about sample rate as slices of time if you I've tried to avoid this at all costs but whatever so you probably thought about that that's not what's going on your bit depth and your sample rate are linked together your sample rate is actually the rate at which you're encoding your bit depth so the faster you encode your bit depth is your sample rate there is no like slices of time it's recording amplitude values now if you have one bit you can represent one amplitude value so you can have values down here or values up there that's it that's all you can have if you have Two bits, you've doubled your, your options and you can have more levels of loudness. You can have a level here, down here, uh, you know, and if we go up to 16 bits, we can have a whole bunch of values. So we can have, it's like we're putting things on graph paper and every time there's an intersection on our graph paper, that's a point we can put, but we can never have a point that doesn't land on an intersection uh, on the, on the Y axis for our volume representation. So if we want more points, we get more fine graph paper with much smaller squares. This allows us to graph amplitude. And it's important that our amplitude is recorded relative to our other am other amplitude. As long as it's recorded correctly, we can blow it up and shrink it and whatever, and things will sound like they did originally. So that's really great and all. And that's why uh, sampling, that's why sampling the way we do it will give us our amplitude because it's sampling the amplitude and just the rate at what it's doing that will give you your signal back. That's why we can get our amplitude back and our phase back is from that aspect of sampling. So once we have this, that's that's pretty much all there really is to bit depth. Now, <laughs> that's, the, that's all there is to the wrong way to think about bit depth. We're talking about this as absolute values. Old things like flash D to A converters, the first converters were uh, worked on this principle where what would happen is it'd go into your system, go through a series of resistors. Each resistor would measure the amount of voltage that was there. And if it got through more resistors, then it would be re registered at a higher value. If it got through less resistors, it'd be a lower value. And as a result, or there, there were other schemes too where it would go through in parallel. There were all sorts of different schemes and it would output these uh, perfect values. But the whole point... But we ran into issues. First of all, it's out. You need a ton of resistors to do this. I'm not even gonna talk about how this works out. It's just dumb. You just need a lot of resistors. It's impossible to design a circuit like that. So they came up with other systems, but then you started dealing with the tolerances. It couldn't. Resistors couldn't get that finely t detailed. They just couldn't do it. And so the way we, uh, so we had mega big issues with bit depth in the early days. And they came up with ways around it, but ironically. They do not work this way. So I'm going to ignore that side of things and talk about it in another video. And we're going to talk about bit depth and relative levels. So in 16-bit, you have, you know, a whole bunch of levels. In 24-bit, you have so many smaller levels. And these levels, it's like the graph paper analogy. And you could pretty much think about that for now. Later on, we're going to talk about low bit converters. And I'm going to blow your mind, like, if you've never heard of them. Like, you just simply, it, because of what I just said, there are serious design flaws in trying to recreate a signal like that. You just simply won't get an accurate signal ever from your A to D because you'll run into issues with resistors on conversion. And when you're putting signal back out. This would be more appropriate for a more advanced series. But for bit depth, that's what you need to know. And you need to know that it's linked to your sample rate. Because when we talk about low bit converters, you're gonna you're just gonna be like, what? What? That's what I'm telling you right now. You're gonna be thinking that. But anyways, bit depth is the up and down, um, the up and down, like how many levels of volume you can have. An absolute bit depth. We're gonna talk about low bit converters again and all this stuff's gonna go out the door, but this is the way everyone thinks about it. I even have instructors who still think about it this way. And when I told them about the other way, they were like blown away, but that's funny because 
all converters use this principle now. It's pretty wild. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.